G'day there, this is Paul, the Mystic Guy, and I just wanted to take you through this introductory video to the theme prompt editor in the Mystic configuration system. We'll be doing a number of uh, videos on this side of Mystic, how you can configure and refine the look and feel. So this one is a bit of a once over lightly to show you just what's behind the scenes. When you go into the theme prompt editor, the first option is to choose which theme you want to edit. And as you can see, Mystic ships with one theme called default. Pressing enter on that allows you to edit the theme. The theme has an associated file name which sits in the data directory of Mystic. If I open up the data directory you'll see it sitting here, default. It's a text file that when you examine it closely contains a number of lines of data including prompts which are things like the user's password, um, a new user password prompt and so on. Lines that just have a description are commented with a semicolon but the actual prompt numbers you can see here are going up. So in user login and valid password is prompt number three where there is a carrot return, a pipe command to turn it into a, the text into a certain color and then the text invalid password. Back in the actual configuration editor you can edit these prompts and see more of this in a nice graphic user interface by choosing the prompts option in the edit theme and it brings up a screen that looks like this. So here I can use the up and down arrow keys to step through the various uh, prompts and you'll recall we looked at prompt number three, user login invalid prompt. If I press enter on this it will actually simulate what the prompt looks like to the user logging into the bulletin board. Pressing enter again returns you to this view. If you wanted to edit this prompt at this stage you could. You can just use the cursor keys to change the text or change the color. So let's make the color code 11 and add the words hey. That's an invalid password. And now it looks like this. If I was to hit escape it will prompt me if I want to save the changes. If I say no and just drop back to this point by going back into the prompts menu you'll see that the invalid password changes have not been made. This is a really good little editor. You can use it to find things pretty quickly. So you can go control F and look for the word home and there it finds a prompt with the word home. Enter your home phone number. You can use the control F to find um, any sort of options you like. Let's go with data. If you wanted to look for the word data again, control A will find the next prompt with the word data, control A and so on. We'll get into this more later but that's a quick introduction to that. Here you can also edit menus and going into the menu editor is just the same as if you were in, if I hit the escape key a few times, this option here off the main editors menu. So this way you come in and you go menu editor, which uh, theme do you want? and then it displays the various menus. Conversely, if you're in the theme prompt editor, you choose the theme that you want, and then you can go in through here, menus. But in this section, you can also change a number of other options. So under options, you can choose to set up, for argument's sake, what the password echo character will look like. So as I'm typing in my login password to Mystic, I might choose instead of looking at a star to choose a, a different character. You can do this by either entering a key or if you want to you can enter the ASCII number. So I know that ASCII number 254 produces a nice little blocky sort of shaped character. There it is there. And you can see now that when you were entering in a password it would echo back that particular symbol. But if I, for argument's sake I wanted it to be the asterisk again, the star key, then I can just simply press the star key, hit enter, and now you'll see that it recognizes it's a star ASCII number 42. I won't go through all of these options, but do explore them. You'll find that there's plenty you can customize for this one default theme alone. And as you can imagine, you can set up a number of themes, and each theme has its own customizations. You can also customize how the percent bars look, whether they are horizontal or vertical, what the background colors are, where the uh, bar starts and the X and Y axis and so on. 
You can also set what are known as box styles. This is a relatively new um, thing to Mystic and a box style, simply put, looks like this where you can see some header text, an example bit of message text in the middle and ultimately a command prompt yes or no. Now when you come to editing this you can change how the frame looks, what the colour of the frame is, whether the shadow, the text colour um, and so on. And if you just want to muck around with this it can be quite fun. You can change all sorts of things and if you ever get sick of it just go to defaults and reset back to the uh, stock standard defaults. But there are four box styles that you can apply within a given theme. The other things you can do with this uh, edit theme editor is to set a few things like whether or not um, users that are logged in and using ASCII emulation are allowed to use the theme. For argument's sake you might set a theme up purely for ANSI users because you want to showcase top quality graphics and not so much the ASCII text ones. Or it could be that you want something that's very easy uh, for uh, people to look at using uh, just ASCII uh, interface, doesn't need the colour graphics. So there you can set the yeses and noes. You can also define the column size of this theme. Usually 80 columns is the right way to go for a, a typical theme. Uh, a, a screen layout would be 80 columns wide by about 24 columns deep. But it might be that you are designing a theme for someone looking on a terminal that might only display say 40 columns wide. The last thing I want to point out, well two or three things actually, is this one here, allow fallback. So what this means is if you have other themes in place and for argument's sake within another theme that a user is um, operating under, there is a menu or something that for whatever reason they can't find and the menu doesn't exist or something's not quite configured right, by allowing um, fallback yes on that theme that they're actually logged in under, it will fall back to, or Mystic will fall back to this default theme that we're looking at here. And so it's got some sort of behind the scenes smarts to offer the user some option that otherwise wouldn't be available to them by falling back to the default system. So that's actually quite a good one to use for most of your uh, themes that you create. I'd set that to yes for each theme because that way if something goes wrong your user's still going to be able to get access to functionality that's going to help them get out of a jam. Finally I just want to point out that the text, menu and script paths are, as you can see in this default theme, the default um, settings. And I point that out because if you were to create a new theme, and we use the forward slash key to bring up the command list, and let's just insert a theme here, you'll see it's called new. If I press enter on that, Although the file name is in theory called new and the description is called new, look at what it's done with the text menu and script paths. It's still using the default paths. So the risk here is that if you set up a new theme and you forget to change this, you run the risk of messing with your default setup. So what I try to do is let's just for the sake of things create under Mystic um, something called theme, oops, themes, and then I will call it, uh, I'll call it new, because that's the name of my theme, and then text. So it's going to create that path, or that directory, and I'll do the same here, I can't type to save myself at this one, new, menus, and finally scripts. So you can see where I'm going with this. Uh, if you have a look in the back end of Mystic, and I just bring you back up here, you'll see we now, what well we should have once I've refreshed it, there it is, the themes, and now I have um, a new theme, and there's my scripts and text. Did I make a mistake there? I think I might have. Yeah, I did too. You probably spotted that as I was doing it. So I made I typed the word news. So there we go. That's a trap for players. So I've set up different paths for where the text, menu, and script file should should exist. But you'll notice that in these um, directories, there's absolutely nothing there. 
So the safe bet to start with is to actually copy from your um, text file, text folder. I would copy all of that into my themes, new text, and whack all those files in there. And I then I would also do the same by going into my scripts folder, Mystic Scripts, and I would copy everything that's there into my themes, new scripts. So now I've got some script files that are unique to this theme. And then the last one I need to do is menus. So I'd go into Mystic, menus, pick up all those menus from the default theme and go into my themes new menus and paste them in. Now there is one thing, I'll just get rid of that one because that was a mistake. There is one thing that's still missing from this and I'll show you what it is. If I go into try and edit my prompts you'll see that it says I can't open the file in data directory called new.txt even though it's created a new theme and assigned a file name of new, it does not create by default the, the file, the data file. So in Mystic Data, it doesn't exist here as one of these text files. So the only way to fix this is to take your data, your default text file and copy that and paste it and then rename it. In this case, we're renaming it to new. Now if I go in and have a look at this prompts side of things, you'll see that it's opened up and it's found the text file. And this is a different file to the default one, so if I change invalid password wrong, put an exclamation mark in it, and save that, that is completely different than the default theme. If I go into prompts, my invalid password is simply this. Righto, that's enough for this first introductory video, just having a quick look at themes. When we come back we'll be taking a look at some of the further customization work you can do and uh, other tweaks and modifications that come along with it as well. As always, if you like the videos, please like uh, the video and uh, let your friends know. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Until then, bye for now.